Yeah, well. That's right. I'll go to to this daily line. Okay, one minute. First and second breaks, I want something to say. First and second? Yeah. You got it. I always say that, and then I forget. So I'm trying to f come up with better ways to remind myself. Jay, Jay. He has an announcement, and then I just forget. <laughs> He's back there. Don't pound the table. <laughs> Don't pound the table. <laughs> Wall the window. <clears throat> yeah, it gives me the sign, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, boss. <laughs> Just doing the best I can. Oh, there's 403. I think that is good. Oh, it's going to be such a good show today. I'm excited. Yeah. You're such a well qualified guest. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Friday, the show about science, technology, and things that matter to Hawaii. I'm your host, Attila Saras. Today, we have a very special guest, Mark McGuffey, Managing Director of Enterprise Honolulu, Oahu's Economic Development Board. But before we forget, the number to call in with questions throughout the show is 296-5467. That's 296-5467. And our shows are also being live streamed on a bunch of different places, such as Spreaker, on uh, iHeartRadio, on Ustream, and Justin TV. But if that's all too much for you to remember, just go to our website, thinktechhawaii.com. That's T H I N K T E C H H A W A I I Hawaii.com. And uh, you can go there and uh, listen to our shows live over the internet and even tune in to see the video of this program. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mark. I really appreciate you coming down. You're very welcome, Attila. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, uh, would it be okay if I uh, introduce your, uh, your bio here? Uh, it's, it seems you are a very well-qualified person to, uh, to help our industry here. Uh, Mark McGuffey is a practitioner of servant leadership, and he cares for Hawaii and across the, across the seas. Uh, he is a current managing director of Enterprise Honolulu, the Oahu Economic Development Board, and he connects individuals and organizations locally, nationally, and internationally, and really focus on the areas of astronomy, aerospace, biotechnology, and blue economy innovations, uh, environmental system design, food and energy security, education, and even workforce development. And uh, even though you have over 35 years of international luxury hospitality experience, uh, you know, you maintain affiliations with uh, the ZERI, the Zero Emissions Research Init uh, and Initiatives, uh, Intergenerational Partnership Task Force, the Steering Committee for Hawaii, uh, IUCN 2016, Friends of the Future, Economic Development Alliance Hawaii, Hawaii Aerospace Advisory Committee, and you're also the founder of the Hawaii Island Leadership Series. And it's a privilege and an honor to have someone who's doing so much to take a little bit out of their time to come join us on ThinkTech. Well, that was a mouthful. <laughs> well, you're the one who's actually doing it. So, uh, you know, why don't you tell me a little bit uh, about this uh, small article uh, you picked up in the paper today? You brought it in for us to show. Yes, uh, in just under two weeks from now, uh, we'll be leading a delegation again back to Bio uh, Bio International which is the world's largest biotechnology conference. Mm -hmm. It'll be held in Chicago this year. And uh, this morning's paper, as you mentioned, uh, one of the companies that's joining us, that's gone for many years now uh, and joined the Hawaii contingent, is Hawaii Biotech. And the headline receives rights to vaccines. And uh, it's about um, Hawaii Biotech acquiring back their rights on the pharmaceutical, from the pharmaceutical giant Merck on um, a family of patents for the West Nile virus wow. uh, against the West Nile uh, vaccine. So it is great to see um, Hawaii-grown companies 
ex accelerating and doing fantastic work worldwide. So. And so this, uh, these rights, what, how is that going to change things here for us? Well, I think that the, the bioconference that we're going to, um, typically it's between 15 to 20,000 participants hmm. from about 65 countries. And we're in the process right now for the next couple of weeks finalizing one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, business meetings for all the companies joining us. Um, and many of them are international uh, meetings. Mm. And so we're looking to increase the export opportunity out of Hawaii, whether it's IP or at, because we're not a manufacturing state in the traditional sense. Um, most of the technology that is exportable out of Hawaii is intellectual property. So um, this is a, a clean tech industry and we're very, very supportive of, of the progress and uh, helping our companies grow. And, and it sounds to me like this, this announcement in the paper comes at a perfect time. It certainly does. Right before the conference. Right before yeah. the conference. And this, this conference, this is the Biotechnology International Summit in two weeks in Chicago. And you said it was the biggest one. In, is that in the world? In the world, it? yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. and, and it rotates. It's not always in Chicago. It was in Boston last year. And, um, <clears throat> so we've had uh, much success in the past of, of attending. Um, it's really driven for making these relationships, the business relationships. And a lot of the work goes on before arriving in on the floor, not to check, take it for chance. So it's establishing the connections beforehand is critical. And what do you hope to gain by going there? I mean, I, I, obviously you're going to try to bring in some more partnerships from, from abroad, but is there anything particular you guys are, are honing in on uh, with your organization? Well, um, yes, there are uh, uh, six main companies as well as um, our friends from economic development boards uh, on uh, Maui and Hawaii Island are joining us, um, as well as uh, university and uh, DBET, the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism. This was um, actually supported and funded by, or well, partially funded by an SBA grant, mm. Small Business Administration grant, federal grant that DBET was awarded and they contracted uh, the Economic Development Boards uh, as our HUI, our group, Economic Development Alliance of Hawaii. We're in alphabet soup here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but the organization um, of the work that we do on the ground is working closely with our companies and um, helping them get to a place that they may not be able to afford normally. So this is really helping them uh, not only get to the conference, but also setting up business meetings. And I, I notice here in your title, you're on Oahu's Economic Development Board. Are there other development boards throughout Hawaii? Yes, there's one in each of the main counties, the four counties, um, all private nonprofit organizations. And collectively, all four of us sit on a board, which is the Economic Development Alliance of Hawaii. And that is what you're going to be representing in Chicago in two weeks? Correct. Oh, oh, but, and, and with the purpose of getting our companies, the private companies, to um, increase their uh, sales uh, uh, through connections. Well, and you know, I've done trade shows for years. Mm -hmm. I get it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the only way to really do a business-to-business -business transaction is face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. um, usually there's a theme. When, whenever I, I've done trade shows in the past. Is, is there a theme for this upcoming event? Well, it's uh, connect, inspire, and innovate. I mean, those are sort of trite words, I suppose, but it's... Powerful, though. Oh, Powerful, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, um, it is about connections. And you can't just go to the show and expect people to come to you uh, on a whim. You need to work it. And so we have a system that's provided by Bio International to do a lot of the uh, groundwork ahead of time. Hmm. Yeah. And, and what is, 
I mean, I, I suppose, what, what is that groundwork? Do you offer information? Do you provide lectures? Or how does it work? We have access to all the companies attending. And then through filtering uh, and honing in on the types of companies that the Hawaii companies want to meet, it's up to them to start selecting and then picking up the phone, making emails, making contacts, and then setting up the appointments. Oh, that's perfect. And I'm guessing this this trade show, this is not the first time you've been to it. You know? This is the fifth. Fifth. And actually, sixth bio event. I went to Bio Japan once. But, um, this is the fifth uh, national one, international one. Sorry. And uh, what kind of results have you had in the past from going? Well, I th again, I think it's uh, not only the exposure for Hawaii, because um, when we first started doing it, people looked at the Hawaii booth or pavilion and said, Hawaii? What are you doing here? <laughs> We're right? just growing pineapples. Why? Right, What's right. the big deal? <laughs> so there wasn't really a connection at that time and understand. And everybody would smile because it's mm -hmm. Hawaii. Right. But getting over that stigma of doing business in Hawaii, uh, it was very important to be there. If you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So the presence was the first steps was to establish that, yes, we, we are uh, serious about doing biotechnology in various fields. We have, if you look at Hawaii as the, the, the entity of the state, our location on the planet, we're one of the most biodiverse locations, most remote locations. Um, and so there's a lot of interest in the unique ecological system here, our endangered species, we're endangered species capital of the world. So how do we look at science and discovery of systems that we have in our natural environment that can help scientists translate that into helping for health? Mm. And so that's now starting to grow in interest. And hence, we have over 120 biotech related organizations now in Hawaii. So to answer your question, it was first of all to say we're here, and then why and who we are, and now it is demonstrating that we have you know, some serious companies here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. When we get back, we're talking with Mark McGuffey about new prospects for biotech in Hawaii. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. 760 KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. It looks typical so far. No major after problems. The, the last accident was over on the upper Windward Coast, Kamehameha Highway in Laie. Drive over to the Windward side is good. No problems to Hawaii Kai. Yes. Going west, it's the H1 nice. slows at the Hickam Curb. The Moanalua slows at Moanalua Gardens. Inbound traffic from the west slows no, really as you approach kinda, the Middle Street merge on either really freeway. Down. Inbound traffic from the, the east uh, slows at the Kapiolani Boulevard exit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be bunch. awesome. Because I'd really like to... Like well, the Hawaii Biotech is one right there. Well, but of, of a company that's won some sort of partnership. Yeah, with True them. Tank uh, came last year. Uh, they're not coming this year, but they, they're working on, and I can't divulge, they're working on a very big deal oh. right now. True Tank. True, tr true tag, tag Technologies, yeah. And then Cardex, Cardex, uh, David Watermall, Tissue Genesis. I mean, they're. Oh, right. Oh, that was, there's a whole bunch here. Where did I? Oh, I didn't print that one out. Oh, no, I did. Yeah. So we'll talk about the success stories of these. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a real positive angle I try to do. Um, yeah. I like to keep things on a positive. Yeah. You know, like just really exciting kind of positive. I, I just. You know, sometimes we get people in here who've worked for the state and they're very frustrated. And mm. This is a good hour for them to get it out. Good one-hour therapy. Mm. And I just, you know, I, I think that there's always there's a good and bad side to that. 
Think Tech Hawaii is a Hawaii nonprofit corporation organized in the year 2000. Its purpose is to raise public awareness about the importance of technology, energy, agriculture, and globalism to the diversification and expansion of our economy. We do this by television shows on community television and on OC16, by newspaper articles, and by our Think Tech radio series on KGU 760 AM. We also do it by panel programs and events, including our monthly luncheon programs with the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. ThinkTech, working to raise public awareness in Hawaii. Check us out at thinktechhawaii.com. ThinkTech Radio is also brought to you by InmoBi. Since its inception in 2007, InmoBi has grown to become the world's largest independent mobile advertising network, serving over 100 billion mobile ads to date. It has built its product in parts of the world where the mobile phone is not just a screen, it's the only screen. After launching in the U.S. and Europe in 2010, InmoBi has more than doubled its global network, from 7 billion to 60 billion impressions monthly, and has offices on four continents, in Bangalore, Johannesburg, and London, in Nairobi, New York, and Paris, in San Francisco, Seoul, Singapore, and Tokyo. In Mobi. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Sares, and here with our guest, Mark McGuffey. And we're talking about new prospects for biotech in Hawaii. When we last uh, left the conversation, we were talking about the world's largest biotech conference coming up in Chicago in two weeks. And, uh, and uh, it is going to be in Chicago, and it's called the Biotechnology International Summit. Uh, but before we forget, uh, Jay Fidel has an announcement for us. Take it away, Jay. Yeah. To go further on your comments earlier, Attila, uh, remember the ThinkTech live streams all of its talk shows live on the internet. We put streaming video on Ustream and streaming audio on Spreaker. If you want to catch us live, those video and audio streams are available and easy to find on our website. Check them out on thinktechhawaii.com. Remember also that we have a, a gallery for a live audience in our downtown ThinkTech studio here at Pioneer Plaza. You can come down and be a member of that audience and people do. You can pose questions to our guests and you can participate in the discussion. So to re reserve your place in our studio audience, write to me, Jay Fidel, jay at fidel.com. Thanks, Attila. Back to you. Oh, thank you, Jay. And uh, yeah, for those of you listening online, we do appreciate your patronage and uh, please continue to listen in online every week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for our Think Tech series. Uh, but back to our uh, discussion, we were talking with Mark McGuffey. And uh, we're talking about uh, this, uh, this new uh, symposium that's coming up in Chicago. And we were, during the break, we were talking about some of the success stories that have come out of it. I, I, I'm really excited to see. We have a long list. But we have everything from these, uh, from, uh, you mentioned it was Cardex. They were doing uh, tissue generation. Uh, we had uh, TrueTag. They were working on some sort of uh, larger deal. And uh, obviously, you can't discuss many of the details that, are, that have happened. But, uh, but I am interested to hear about some of the success stories that have come out of collaborating with uh, other mainland companies internationally or, or mm -hmm. nationally and uh, how that's helped the state and created jobs and made us a more attractive place for biotech. Yeah, I, uh, that's what we're looking for, is success mm -hmm. stories. So um, uh, TrueTag, you mentioned, TrueTag Technologies is a couple of years old. It was um, developed uh, with uh, Hank Wu and mm. his companies. And Peter Wong um, came with us last year to Bio in uh, Boston and is now uh, working on a very large deal uh, to take this commercially. Um, and TrueTag is about uh, micro um, or nano uh, tech use of identification on <coughs> um, in the pharmaceutical market uh, for to counteract fraud in um, uh, for drugs sold on the shelf. Oh, I see. And it has other. Um, op you know, opportunities in the food business and a few other things, um, but it's really starting to take off. Um, Hawaii Biotech, which we talked about just a minute ago, mm -hmm. um, and the companies that are joining us this year is LOI Pharma, um, HNU Nanopoint, 
Nanopoint was originally um, uh, started under Oceanet and spun oh, yeah, off. Really? Yeah, spun off, and now Dan O'Connell is now the CEO, and uh, they have five people coming to Bio uh, just from Nanopoint uh, on the uh, HNU Photonics systems. Um, Noni Biotech from Maui, uh, Pono Pharma, uh, a company uh, run by uh, Dustin Shindo, and so, and Tissue Genesis, which has been in Hawaii for over a dozen years, they're doing great work um, in regenerative medicine. That is amazing. Yeah. That is, it's very complicated, I know. Yeah. And I'm not a scientist. Sorry, oh. sorry I hit the mic. Oh, um, no, that's fine. I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to go into too much details, as you said. Oh, but, that's okay. But just on the, um, I have a, a layperson's view, mm -hmm. um, but it's really exciting, as you said, that these um, companies are spawning out of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, would you agree that Hawaii is a great proving ground for new technology? Most definitely. And we can take, and we have that unique uh, environment here where we can see if it works. And uh, kind of like the Eva Smart Grid on Maui. Mm -hmm. but it's going to be the first of its kind. And then once it works, we'll take it to then the mainland. To right. scale, right, right, to scale up. And then, you know, with the advent of the opening of the University of Hawaii Cancer Center this year, over a $100 million facility, you know, um, with clinical trials now being set up with a, a joint venture with uh, Queen's Medical uh, System. Very, very, very strong. Um, it's called the UH Cancer Consortium. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the College of Pharmacy, uh, which was started uh, only a few years ago, they've graduated their first class a couple of years ago. Um, the demand for enrollment at the UN, uh, University of Hawaii Hilo College of Pharmacy is unbelievable. So mm -hmm. it's the only one uh, that provides in the Pacific Basin a doctorate in pharmacy. So we're starting to hit the world stage in this arena. Um, again, as I mentioned, we're not in mass manufacturing business, but the um, intellectual property aspect is very, very powerful here. Well, it sounds to me you, you touched on an interesting point that our university systems are also being improved. Mm -hmm. Our education systems are being, our higher higher learning education systems are being improved because now we have these opportunities for people who once graduate from these schools to be able to step out into the working world. Into into <coughs> good paying jobs too. Without so, having to leave. Right. And JAPSA ah. also in Kaka'ako um, is, is also a world class facility. So we have a lot of great things from the education infrastructure um, to support uh, and now these new entrepreneurial companies that are, are being born. Uh, but we've got, you know, Hawaii Biotech is the oldest uh, biotech company in Hawaii. Uh, I've forgotten how long, but it's over a dozen years or so. Um, and tissue genesis as well. So as a, a saying, Hawaii's biotechnology, developing a blueprint for health. This is all about how do we get healthy as a, as a, a community, as a, a state, and to help the world. You know? Well, and, and there seems to be a, a trade-off also. I mean, if, if you come up with, like I mentioned here with Hawaii Biotech, the only West Nile virus vaccine in clinical studies yeah. is here. That's it. So if we do that much good to others, then they can reward us as well. Maybe financially, maybe uh, maybe they can give us the uh, the recognition that Hawaii deserves mm -hmm. uh, for being a place for this kind of innovation. And you know, it sounds to me like you're right at the forefront. You're the one who's who's spearheading this operation. Well, so don't get hit by a bus. <laughs> that's my. That's my. <laughs> I wouldn't call me at the forefront of the technology, but we're certainly helping where we can to, uh, to, to bring Hawaii forward mm -hmm. in front of um, the world players, yeah. And you're doing that not just with this uh, upcoming event, but uh, we mentioned here that uh, there was also an Asia Pacific Management Summit uh, uh, coming uh, up, <coughs> and a Trade Winds Asia, this, is, this mm. is so cool. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about these, these new upcoming events that, that you're going to be 
promoting Hawaii or where you're going to be promoting Definitely. Hawaii. Um, Trade Winds Asia is the next one up uh, right after Bio. Um, that's in South Korea, and it's a mission to again bring Hawaii companies to help them export. And um, this is in conjunction with the U.S. Commercial Service. Mm. And again, it is um, thanks to a grant in part by SBA, Small Business Administration, um, uh, granted this through um, DBET and to the Economic Development Boards. And I happen to be leading this delegation. Um, and we're working with um, eight companies right now to, to go to Korea and uh, they have to go through a rigorous assessment process. And again, it is the same thing. It is not by chance that they're there. All the meetings will be scheduled before they get there. Hmm. So building those connections, those relationships, is what it's about. It's not necessary, uh, you know, in trade shows, sometimes they're viewed as uh, looking at widgets and ideas. Uh, it's really about the relationship. And l making those connections only happen, as you've mentioned, face to face. And, uh, and understanding why they want to know about your technology or your, uh, your business plan, your business model. So Trade Winds Asia is the uh, first time for us in Hawaii to go uh, collectively. And um, so that's May 12th to 15th. And then the um, focusing on uh, something closer to home is in September we have the Islands and Isolated Communities Congress, which is in conjunction with the Asia Pacific Clean Energy Summit. We've had the, the summit for the last, this will be the fifth year. And last year we decided that it was important that because of where we are, islands in particular and isolated communities have unique challenges in dealing with systems, whether it's energy, water, um, even disaster management. We are just our nature. We're away from things. Mm -hmm. So if you look back in time and history, uh, Hawaii was unique in its innovations. It was the, it's the most isolated archipelago on the planet and thrived prior to industrial revolution and industrialization. Um, and it thrived for various reasons. And what we need to look at is some of the, the wisdom from the past melded with modern technology on how we can improve our environment and quality of life and you know, prosper in a, in a economic sense. And, and so, so this, this emphasis. This is on it. And I mean, what kind of, I, I see on this, uh, on this flyer, mm -hmm. we have uh, clean water, we have agriculture. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get back from the break. I really want to talk about this. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Attila Sares, here with, uh, with Mark McGuffey, and we're talking about new prospects for biotech in Hawaii. All right, stay with us. We'll be back after the break. 760 KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. So I think it would be cool to talk about the past. Where we've done that. There's one new accident. It's in town on Kalakaua between King and Phillips Street. Um, no problem so far going east to right Hawaii Kai, right. and the drive over to the windward side is okay, good on the Pali, the Lique, Lique, and, and no, the H3. If you're going west, the H1 slows at the Eva end there's, of the airport viaduct. Nice. The Moana Lewis slows at Fort Shafter Flats. It's going to be uh, packed until well, you get out past uh, Sears. Well, Inbound well, traffic from the west slows at the Middle right. Street merge. I'm just uh, trying to gauge uh, because I can talk a long time on this. Oh, no, yeah, I would love this, to. Uh, several, several things I wanted to get across. Okay. But, uh, uh, well, but definitely this is a very important one. So we'll yeah. just spend a couple minutes on this. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll move on to, the inve I guess, the investment cycle. Yeah, that would be great. I think that would, that would work out well. Because usually we like to go like challenges, which might fall well into the investment cycle. And then, like we like to end with something positive, the future. Sure. So, 
And then we'll probably finish around 58, 59 after. Okay. So that little clock there, I'll say 59. We'll right. start hearing the music. And uh, yeah. And uh, you have another announcement after the break? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is it uh, going well, all right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, That's good. Fun. I will, um, if you start to fall asleep, I, I, I try to <laughs> wake you up. Oh. Honey, if office. we had installed solar water heating last year, we oh. would have saved about $600 on our electric bill. Wow, that's like 40 pounds of poke. Or 15 bikinis. Or 800 pounds of rice. Or 200 yeah, pairs of slippers. Or 750 malasadas. Well, that's a lot of malasada. Solar water is the first step towards big energy savings. With Hawaii Energy's limited time rebate, get solar water heating for about two grand and reduce your electric bill up to 40%. That's a lot of malasada. Visit hawaiienergy.com slash solar water. With the Kahiawa Wind Farm on Maui and the Kahuku and Kawailoa Wind Farms on Oahu, First Wind is pleased to create clean, local sources of energy powered by Hawaii Strait Winds. Understanding our unique environment and host culture, First Wind develops projects that support local communities and provide net benefits to native wildlife, embracing the concept of caring from Mauka to Makai. Who come a cunning? May the wind blow towards a sustainable future for Hawaii's people. For more information, visit firstwind.com. We're back. We're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Ceres. We're here with Mark McGuffey, and we're talking about new prospects for biotech in Hawaii. But before we rejoin the conversation, I have another announcement here from Jay Fidel. Go ahead, Jay. Take it away. Thank you, Attila. You know, uh, Mark's discussion, it all makes me realize that we got to put things in perspective and we can't forget where we are, namely in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the Pacific between the West Coast and Asia. So we're having a program, Think Tech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. We call it Hawaii's Growing Financial Connection with Asia and how we can make it grow all the faster. It's on April 25th, a Thursday at the Plaza Club. Uh, we want to examine and illuminate Hawaii's bridge to Asia, particularly in connection with its financial connections with Asia from financial people. So come and see Varian Allen. He's an investment manager. He's our moderator. And our panelists are Stephen Connell, Roger Epstein, an attorney, David Day, an attorney, international attorney, and Brad Punu, all of whom have years of experience in business and investment and financial dealings with Asia. And they're going to reveal their secrets, illuminate the bridge, and show us how the connection is working. You can sign up for this program on hvca.org, April 25th at the Plaza Club. Thanks so much, Attila. Back to you. Oh, well, thank you, Jay, and uh, I think that their secrets will no longer be secret after this event, so everyone should <laughs> sign up and go see it. Um, when we last left the conversation, we were talking with Mark McGuffey about Islands and Isolated Communities Congress. Uh, it's a summit and expo at the uh, Convention Center between uh, September 9th through the 11th, and uh, it's really talking about how isolated communities, uh, you know, uh, Need, need assistance. You know, they have uh, energy dependencies, constrained resources, and vulnerabilities. They're, uh, you know, they're subject to climate change. And global leaders are going to get together and develop solutions and projects uh, from island nations worldwide. And uh, really, the sustainability of our island communities depend on best practices uh, developed in energy and water and agriculture and security and resource management, all these things. And, uh, you know, we're, this, this, uh, this event is really trying to focus on developing solutions that will help our, our island people and uh, and as we discussed over the break if these solutions work we can roll them out elsewhere we can scale them up isn't that ex exciting stuff that's right it's exactly the the point I think that again um, this Congress is a uh, is included co-located with the Asia Pacific Clean Energy Summit the word Asia Pacific sort of gives uh, a connotation of the area uh, of where it should, who should be coming. Uh, but islands and isolated communities broadens it worldwide. Yeah. Because we have friends in the Canary Islands, Okinawa, uh, Hong Kong, uh, that are facing completely different constraints, but challenges, but also um, interested in, in how we work on solutions. 
and it comes back to relationships again. Mm. <laughs> We've got plenty of ideas. It's all uh, how we uh, work through them in, in our communities, in our governments, with academia and private business coming together. Um, so we've created, um, and it's online, you can actually, we've created a, uh, a website uh, link which takes you to the main website called islandsconnect.com. That's islands, plural, connect.com. Connect All right, we'll put that on our Think and, Tech Hawaii website. And <clears throat> that will take you to this main website which includes the Asia Pacific Clean Energy Summit and the Islands and Isolated Communities Congress. Within that, we're having call for papers uh, of a global island solutions challenge. And we've had a lot of interest already. The cutoff for this is um, May 24th, I believe. Um, and then there will be an assessment of all the, the solutions suggested and then um, presented. The top ones will be selected to be presented at the Congress. The purpose of the Congress is not just to meet and say how great we are and what, you know, what's the latest thing since sliced bread. It is really to work on how we go forward collaboratively. Um, we have one group, uh, it's called the Carbon War Room. Hmm. Carbon War Room is funded by Sir Richard Branson. Oh. And yeah. <coughs> they are interested in coming with a group to meet other groups and then at the end of the Congress create a working group here in Hawaii that will take this forward as an example. The carbon war, and the what are they, what are they war. warring for? The, what war, you, or the war on carbon, right? So mm -hmm. fossil fuel, uh, like Blue Planet uh, Foundation, like uh, a, a number of organizations that are focused on how do we transform from a fossil fuel based economy to a, a clean energy and clean uh, Clean, clean planet, future, yeah, right? For our for our kids, really. I mean, and <laughs> and the reefs and everything else, because it, it all these things impact our environment, um, impact in, uh, and us included. Mm. Uh, so, I think it's uh, we're going to be looking focusing on power generation, microgrid and power management, transportation programs, water management, buildings and efficiency, waste management, agricultural management disaster preparedness and relief, which would then go into resiliency and sustainable best practices and bringing these things into, um, so it's gonna be a workout, uh, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and, you know, we've had, this will be the fifth year on the energy conference. This will be the first year of dealing with the islands aspect. And yet we've got higher interest now with the islands side already. Um, in, a, in the first few months of rolling this out. Do you think that could be due to climate change? It has a lot to do with that. Oh, really? It has a lot to do with all of those factors. And how do we, I think, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, nearly two and a half years ago, I chaired a, uh, an event called the World Congress on Zero Emissions Initiatives and brought leaders from around the world as well as showcasing who we have here in Hawaii through the university system, our farmers, bringing and looking at the integration of systems between energy, food, health, housing, uh, transportation, waste and water, those seven disciplines. Hmm. And traditionally in the, we have lineal thinking in our system design in the Western model. Uh, and I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying that's the way it is, as opposed to integrated. So we deal a lot of these things in silos, and yet the cause and effect is suddenly it's broke. Uh, so how do we bring this system thinking, rethinking together? And that's what this is gonna be focusing on. And islands have a, a, a unique examples of islands on how their systems work because they're by themselves, and so that's hence the emphasis. It's like the microcosm. And yeah. it's interesting because from a, if you were to look at another industry, uh, the business industry, mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess it's not industry, software industry, that's written for business, that, that's actually what software does. 
is that it tries to bring in different parts of the business, billing, accounting, customer service, all into one place, and then create a single product out of it. So it sounds to me like maybe that's beginning to happen on a larger scale. So rather than try to focus on little parts of the business, it's on a, it's on a large yeah. scale. Agriculture, it's, farming, like you said. Right. I mean, the, you know, we look at what's happened here in Hawaii. There's we have so much history of things coming and going. Um, how do we get to the point where it's done in a, a more inclusive process? And that is hard and painful sometimes, but it, the end result should be stronger and last longer uh, for the better, as opposed to quick fixes. And uh, too often that's the case. So uh, it is a somewhat of a messy process, <laughs> mm. but I think it's important that we look uh, with expertise, I mean, um, we're bringing the, the specialists together that uh, are focused on this. So um, we're very encouraged about the responses already and look forward to a, a successful Congress. And well, I think this is going to be a lot of fun and, um, and very informative, and uh, hopefully it's going to make some changes. But speaking of changes, you, you had some other uh, printouts here you wanted to share. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about those? I, I think we've... Okay. Yes. Um, well, one of the things is uh, a dear friend of many of us uh, recently passed away who was a pioneer um, in clean energy, in sustainability. Hmm. Um, he was... Uh, I knew him since 2001. Uh, sort of a mentor relationship, uh, helping him uh, as a young man. He passed away uh, in November. His name was Guy Toyama. Hmm. And he was a, a really a bright young man, focused on uh, especially clean energy on Hawaii Island, but also for the state. He represented us many times in uh, international areas in Japan, in, in Korea, in Denmark. Um, and we're holding an event for him uh, in his honor, uh, kicking off the Guy Toyama Memorial Fund at Nelha, at the Hawaii Gateway Energy Center on April 26th. And for those that would like to either participate, we would love to see you there, or there is a, a, a link online that you can go to and find out more information. Um, and. Uh, he, we're developing this memorial fund in his name um, to help uh, raise funds for scholarships for youth that are focused on sustainability and uh, clean energy. Interesting. So that ties, that brings us full circle. Which yes. Is because we were talking about those, uh, those other opportunities that are going to hit us after mm -hmm. this event. Anyways, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. Over on the UH campus, got an accident on Dole Street adjacent to Bachman Hall. The H1 is slow through town in both directions right now. If you're coming in from the west, the slowdown starts at Ola Lane. Coming in from the east, the uh, H1 Everbound slows at UH. The drive east to Hawaii Kai is fine, no problems to the windward side. If you're going west, the H1 stop and go at the west end of the airport viaduct from Wanalua at Middle Street. Friday, 4 p.m. at uh, the Hawaii. Gateway Energy Center at Nelha on Hawaii Island. Where is that? The Hawaii Gateway Center. It's uh, first lap. I was the first tenant in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it's in Gateway to Hawaii, that big. Yeah. Looks like this? Yeah. Yeah, that one. That's it. Okay. Yep. Got it. And that's where a guy had his office. He, was, he joined me there. <laughs> nice, pretty young guy. 42. <laughs> It's young, young to pass away. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the scholarship is going to be developed for the purpose of helping those that are in this arena. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to get, to get there. Yeah. So we'll bring that in and then we'll talk about you know, all the stuff you're working on for the future. Is there any other things you wanted to cover before? Yes, IUCN. 
Ah, checking okay, good. Another. So I'll just announce this, and then we'll just yeah. jump straight to IUCN, because we're only going to have... Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is also brought to you by Hawaiian Electric Company, powering the growth and development of Hawaii since it was chartered by King Kalakaua in 1891. Today, Hawaiian Electric and its subsidiaries, Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company, serve more than 95% of our state, providing reliable electric service essential to our quality of life. The Hawaiian Electric Companies are also leading our transition to clean energy. By increasing our renewable energy use and improving energy efficiency, we're reducing Hawaii's dependence on imported oil and in providing a more sustainable and secure future for Hawaii. For more information, visit hawaiisenergyfuture.com. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is also brought to you by the State Energy Office of the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. How can we secure a better future for Hawaii? One way is clean energy. And the State Energy Office is steering Hawaii to that clean energy future. Hawaii is rich with natural renewable resources, the sun, the wind, the ocean, and the land. And they are all being tapped to meet Hawaii's clean energy initiatives to generate electricity, create jobs, spur economic growth, and reduce our dependence on imported foreign oil. To learn more, visit energy.hawaii.gov. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Sares, and we're here with Mark McGuffey, Managing Director of Enterprise Honolulu, and we're talking about new prospects for biotech in Hawaii. Um, before we left the break, we were talking about uh, Guy Toyama Memorial Fund. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a fund that's uh, designed to help those who, who are here locally who would like to go into the sciences but may not have the funds uh, to be able to do so. And uh, you mentioned that that uh, website was GuyToyamaFund.org. That's G-U-I-T-O-Y-A-M-A Fund.org, and you can accept donations there. Uh, we'll put that on the website also. And there is an event coming up on April 26th on Friday at 4 p.m. at the Hawaii Gateway Energy Center. That's that big horseshoe-shaped building when you first go into Waikiki. No. No. It's I got it wrong. Noha. Noha. Natural okay. Energy Laboratory of Hawaii Authority on Hawaii Island in Kona. Oh, Kea Hole. Oh. Yes, it's the Hawaii Gateway Energy Center, which is a lead platinum building mm. uh, designed by Ferraro Choi and Associates. It was the first platinum uh, lead platinum building in Hawaii. What uh, is a platinum building? Well, lead is uh, leadership in environmental engineering design, mm. or engineering and environmental design, whichever the acronym is. But uh, it's a, a certification of uh, really stepping up on the quality and the uh, commitment for environmental uh, conscious design, mm. if you will. Yeah. So it's we've moved beyond uh, little hobbit barrows where we <laughs> we're bury into the ground and have a round door. We, well, we're, we've moved. We've evolved. Yeah. They're very <laughs> environmentally conscious too. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, before we run out of time, I really wanted to talk about this IUCN. That mm. was the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Oh, fantastic. It sounds like a lot of people would be interested in that. Well, the membership is 11,000 members and uh, scientists. Mm. And so we're on Think Tech Hawaii here, and uh, which I'm glad to be here. This is a, uh, we just were a delegation of us were in uh, uh, Jeju, Korea, uh, last September, to make it known to the World Congress uh, organizers of the IUCN that Hawaii is interested to host the next event in 2016. Um, this has to go through uh, a tremendous amount of um, approvals and uh, through the United States uh, has to be the the uh, host and Hawaii is the logical location to host it mm -hmm. as far as we're concerned but it has to come from um, the United States either from the, the president or the secretary of state really uh, yes Ooh. Um, so the IUCN uh, is um, accepting uh, letters of interest from the nations that are represented by IUCN 
to host the next Congress. And Chipper Whitman, who's the president and CEO of uh, the National Tropical Botanical Garden, um, has been spearheading as the chair of this of effort for the last four years. And we're, we're in the last stages, and we're looking forward to um, uh, working on this uh, to attract IUCN to Hawaii. What does that mean um, regards to bring 10,000 scientists here for two weeks? Hmm. Um, I think would mean a lot economically, uh, just for the meeting itself, but it puts us on the world stage again in all of these areas of sustainability. Uh, it, we're talking about the biodiversity story again in a huge way. Um, and so um, our fingers are crossed. We're praying and uh, looking forward to being considered. Um, and if not this time, maybe next time. But we really have a, a dedicated team working on this uh, because it, it's, I think, is vital for Hawaii to, to not only uh, be recognized, we have two World Heritage Sites here. Mm -hmm. um, we have an incredible biodiversity. Um, and as I said earlier, we are the endangered species capital of the world, literally. Mm. We have the most amount of endangered species on the list. Interesting. Yes. Why do you think that is? Well, again, it comes back to our remoteness. Uh, we were untouched, if you will, for so long. And so just on Hawaii Island itself, there's over 10,000 species of flora and fauna not found anywhere else. Oh, I see. So you start to look at these things and then the concerns of coral reef degradation, you look at uh, worldwide, I'm talking about. And we have some, a lot of work to do ourselves, but we also have some great examples to demonstrate and show how we, our stewardship can help in the, uh, not only in um, caring of the land and the ocean, but also uh, technologies that relate to this. So you bring in people like Pacific Disaster Center, you bring in the UH system, you bring in so many different entities come and in, get involved in NOAA, you know, federal agencies, they're endless, National Park Service. There's so many different um, entities that touch this subject. Well, and um, I mean, if, if they do come here and, and uh, you know, we discuss these topics here, what, what do we hope to achieve? I mean, obviously it would be great to have 10,000 more tourists here, but uh, let, let's, let's, let's talk about achievement here. I mean, what, what can we achieve as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a small island chain? What can we achieve with having these wonderful scientists come visit us? Well, I think it's awareness and education. It's outreach. Mm. It's uh, understanding who we are, what's here, um, what we have to offer, which is very rich and very strong. And <clears throat> because of distances, we've been viewed, you know, we're away, a long way away from many people, 2,500 miles from the nearest continent. Mm -hmm. uh, so what it will achieve is, um, I think it will help all boats, if you will. It will rise all boats from, from academic. Uh, we should learn some things about government, <laughs> and we should learn a lot of things about uh, how this integrates with private industry. So, and community spirit that we have, the aloha uh, that we show, um, is really uh, it's unmatched. fantastic. You're right. It's unmatched. Yeah. And, and, I, and it's great because it, it's also an opportunity for young people to be inspired, right? That's I mean, I live in Hawaii. We have this mm. great summit here. We're going to have the world's best scientists come visit us. We can do so much to engage our youth into this uh, event if, if it does come here. Uh, likewise, at the uh, Islands and Isolated Communities Congress, the Asia Pacific Clean Energy Summit, we want youth there at these events, because it's not about us fuddy-duddies, mm -hmm. I'm talking about me, it's about their future, 
and they should be engaged in the summit and the congresses. That's the thing, science education, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. I heard this just this morning on the radio this morning. Yeah. Science is an investment. Yeah. Once you stop funding it, you stopped investing. In, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a long-term payoff. You know, just you know, different conversation. But we were talking about the space program. Mm -hmm. You know, that that has inspired a whole generation of people to create new devices that we carry in our pockets right. every day, and and create, you know, things that we have in our kitchens every day. I mean, that that is so cool. And and you miss all that when you when you cut science. And so this is going to put us back on the map. You hope. That's your big goal, right? That's one. I think that is a, right on the head. You hit it right on the head. And that's why you do this. That's why you wake yeah. up in the morning. <laughs> you, just, you say, I want to inspire people. I want to take people to new heights. Well, and we deserve it here. We deserve it. Well, help people be inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's up to you. Is it your choice? And it's pointing the way and helping connect uh, people to those that are inspirational. Well, yeah. and that's the thing. You know, I guess this all comes down to, like you mentioned, uh, President Obama. He's the one who has to approve us for the, uh, for the uh, steering committee for Hawaii, the IUCN, for 2016. All we have to do is, is get that letter, right? That's, that's the next step. <laughs> and then, and you know, we have, we have kind of an in. We have a little, we have a little uh, maybe we'll have some pull because he's from here. Well, yeah, leave, well it on, leave it on the wide shot now. Well, there we never know, right? Right, right. <laughs> we leave it in his hands. <laughs> leave it in his hands. That's, that's the right way to do it. And uh, it sounds like you've done a lot already. This is going to be really cool. Well, um, you know, uh, so just as a little bit of a recap, just a few of those websites. We had islandsconnect.com, guytoyamafund.org. We had the events at the uh, on April 26th. We have the the uh, the Biotechnology International Summit in two weeks in Chicago. We have the Asia Pacific Management Summit. So many things that are so exciting. Wish we would have had more time. Mark, thank you for joining us on the program. Really appreciate you being You're here. Very welcome. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we could talk for hours. We but, could. Uh, we got to get going. We got to get going. <laughs> but thank you to our chief engineer Jack Waters, board operator Leah Rodriguez, Jay Fidel, whose passion makes Think Tech possible. And we'll be back next Friday. But be sure to tune in Wednesday with Jay for more Think Tech. Remember to appreciate life. Do good to others and have a great weekend. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> there we go. This time I waited for the sound. Okay. Because <laughs> last time it started going well, it started off. off. Yeah. And yep. the, so this was perfect. All right. No, I'm really excited. What, I, I what, think what this happened? Has been a really cool what stuff. happened with the uh, with the music? Did, what was it? Did you hear the music come in? I did. Yes. And usually I would start to wrap up before that. This time I decided I would wait for the music. <laughs> But you don't know when, you don't know when she cut us off. Though it's five o'clock now. Yes. Uh, Leah, are you there? It's fifty-nine minutes. Just watch this. Hi, Susan. <laughs>